Wow, what an absolutely gorgeous vehicle. Hello everyone, my name's Chad. Today you're on my car channel. We're gonna be taking a in-depth look at the 2000 BMW 528i, also referred to as the E39. Stay with us. We're gonna take a look at this car from the outside, the inside, and let me give you just a real quick description of what this video is about. This is more of a condition type review. This vehicle was just traded in. It hasn't been cleaned. We're gonna look at it and see how the condition has held up over the past 10 to 20 plus years. Stay with us. So it definitely is a good looking car. Still a solid vehicle, well built BMW, right? You know, I can't pop the hood right now because for some reason, I've sat here and tried, every time I get the hood popped, I can't seem to get the latch to let me open it up so I can tell what engine is inside of this vehicle. But let me give you just a little brief information because there was quite a few engines that were available in these BMW 5 Series back in the 2000s. And uh, so anyways, engines that were available, if you wanted a gas engine, which is what we have here, they had a 2.0 liter, 2.2, 3.5, 4.9. So there was a lot of different variables there on engines. And it says in diesel, you can get a 2.0 liter, 2.5 liter diesel, and you can get turbo and all of that. So, you know, some people like diesel, some people like gas. This particular one is a gas engine. I also, from reading and doing a little bit of research before doing the review today, found out that this particular body style BMW was the first BMW to ever even offer a four cylinder engine with it. So this particular body style, the E39, was in production from the year 1995 all the way up until the year 2003. Now, let me know in the comments section if you ever have driven or owned a BMW like this body style right here. You know, it's got a pretty nice long wheelbase on it, so I know the ride quality is going to be pretty good. One thing I really like about this particular car right now is I like those roof racks on top. I don't know what it is, but something about those roof racks make it look kind of sporty, don't it and the alloy wheels stand out now we will take the camera off the tripod here in just a few minutes or maybe less than that and actually start looking at the body of the car and see how the condition and the paint and all that is holding up but we're gonna look at a few more things and talk about a few more things before we get to that so a little more information here the BMW e39 is the fourth generation of BMW 5 series which was sold from 95 to 2003. It was launched in the sedan body style with the wagon estate body style marked as the Touring. That's right, y'all remember those wagons back in the day. Introduced in 1996. The E39 was replaced by the E60 in 2003. However, E39 Touring models remained in production until December of 2003. Now here's some more interesting information about this particular vehicle right here. It says the proportions of chassis components using aluminum significantly increased for the E39. And it was the first five series to use aluminum components in the front suspension. It was also the first five series where a four cylinder diesel engine was available. Rack and pinion steering was used for the first time in the five series being fitted to the E39 four cylinder and six cylinder models. Unlike its E34 predecessor and E60 successor, the E39 was not available with all-wheel drive. If you'd like to read some of the information that I'm reading right now, you can go on a Google search and just do a basic search for 2000 BMW 528i, and this is under the wikipedia.org part of information on this vehicle. It also says here, it states that the M5 sedan was introduced in 1998, powered by a 4.9 liter S62 V8 engine. Oh my lord. I bet that M5 was a freaking beast of a vehicle. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and take the camera off the tripod and looking at the actual body of this car. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at the interior, the trunk, and if I can ever get the hood open, I will definitely open it up for you. 
All right, so let's start taking a look. Today we are filming on a Canon T5i with the 10 to 22 millimeter EFS wide angle lens. This is a great lens to use while filming your automotive reviews or home reviews or whatever you need to film with because it is super wide angle and definitely helps you capture as much of the product that you're filming on camera. So anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the front of this BMW. I love the kidney grill. It's been around for a long time and BMW just never get away from the kidney grill. Headlights look great. You know, one thing I always pay attention to on older vehicles is oxidation with the headlights and the paint on the vehicle. And one thing I'm noticing today with this particular car is that the paint has actually still got a really nice you know, shine to it with the clear coat, so it hasn't really faded a whole lot. And that definitely comes into play with the previous owners of the vehicle you know, if they kept it under a car cover, in the garage, under a carport, something like that. Because it definitely gets hot here in the Carolinas with the sun. Now, the headlights look pretty good. They do got a lit, they don't really have a whole lot of oxidation going on, but the plastic seems like it's starting to get kind of some fine little, tiny little cracks and things in there. But overall, headlights look good, nice and clear. The grill looks great. Another thing I like to point out on here is the BMW logo. I've seen BMWs before where these where these badges here, the, the paint and stuff starts chipping off. And this one is actually in really good shape, as you can see right there. A nice color, right? Kind of a dark green, which looks good. I'm, I'm definitely prone to green colored cars. I had an Acura Integra GSR one time that we had repainted like a dark Cambridge green pearl after a Audi A6 and it was the most beautiful color you know it looked black at night and at daytime it just really shined out nicely so other than that the front end looks good on this car no major dents no major dings no scratches that we can really see at this particular moment Again, it hasn't been cleaned at all with our detail department. I love this style BMW alloy wheel, that mesh look going on there. Very racy um, and very, it's just a nice clean look for a rim. I love a nice little lip. You got that going on. Let's see what size these are. I mean, I could guess they're a 15 inch, something like that, but I think they're a little bigger than a 15. Let's see if we can find it on here. Actually, pretty close to a 15. Uh, a 16 inch rim wrapped with a 255 55 series Michelin tire. So not too bad. You do got your side marker light right there so it can blink when you're trying to get over in traffic. And uh, another thing that I like about BMWs is there's not a whole ton of uh, wheel well gap. So even from the factory, it still sits down pretty low to the ground. You know, the chrome trim is done good. The mirrors still look great. And another thing to point out to you right now, you'll notice on a lot of older cars, the dashes on older vehicles will start cracking and really starting to look really bad. And uh, as you can see here, this dash is still in really great shape. Windshield wipers look good. Again, I like the roof racks up top. You got a sunroof here. Again, another great indication here. I mean, look at the moldings and the rubbers and all. They're in really good shape there. So that tells me that you don't have any leaking going on. And we'll definitely take a look at all that when we get on the inside of the vehicle. Another thing to pay attention to, folks, when you are looking at buying a uh, higher-end vehicle compared to maybe like a, um, like a Kia or a Hyundai or something like that, how solid the vehicle is when you open up the door. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, it's locked up, so we'll have to go around and fix that. But what I was getting ready to talk about here is just doors, they're heavier, right? When you close them, it feels solid. That's going to let me know that, hey, if it does get in a car accident or we get T-boned or something like that, better chances I'm going to be a little bit safer in a heavy, solid car than, you know, just some cheap, cheaply made vehicle, you know, that's in a high production or something like that. Anyways, uh, taillights still look good. They look great. The logo still looks good back here. Trunk lid looks good. I mean, the paint's not brand new and fresh. Again, it's a 2000. It's over 15 years old. Even the back BMW logo is looking good. I mean, you can see a little bit of wear right there on the logo over time. Let's see if we can get focused in. You know, right around that where that blue's at, but still all intact, looks great. You know, that wouldn't be anything that you would need to replace at all, you know, after buying this car. The exhaust pipes, well, you don't really see any, right? So a nice clean look down there. I mean, the exhaust pipe is right over there and it kind of jets downward, but it's not poking out the back. That would be something you're gonna have going on if, you, you know, if you're bumping up to buying the M-Class. Definitely gonna have some cool looking exhaust pipes rolling out the rear. Mosquitoes are horrible right now. Let's see if we can open up. Got a trunk button right there, still working just great. I mean, definitely a dirty trunk, that's for sure. A lot of leaves. So again, this tells me that 
Okay, maybe this person didn't keep the car under a carport or in the garage because it has got a lot of leaves in here and uh, that definitely needs to be cleaned out. But with it telling us that it hasn't been garage kept, the paint is held up extremely good to be out in the weather and under trees all the time. Pretty big trunk though, pretty decent size. I'm definitely not climbing in there. Um, you never know what's in there, right? Spiders, who knows, but I'm not climbing in the trunk. It's nice to see you got a full size spare, just like you have on the exterior body of the vehicle. So you don't have just like a little donut going on on there. So that's, that's nice to see. Let's keep kind of looking around. Another thing that's kind of interesting is you got a light right here. Which is great. I mean, if you get in a car accident or you got to pull over at night to do something, you got your roadside assistance stuff here and you got a light right there to let you see exactly what's going on. And that light will help shine down in here. And then there's another light right there. How about that? So you got one, two lights in the back. Some vehicles don't even have one light in the back. So again, those are the advantages of buying a BMW, right? All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting ready to get on the inside here in just a minute and start taking a look around. But again, before we do, just look at the bottom of the car it really has held up nicely I mean that is a solid vehicle now what I was talking about earlier was with the doors how strong they are I mean yes of course it's not easy to show that through a camera but you can tell it's a nice big heavy door and listen solid for sure another thing to pay attention to with cars you know if you don't like a lot of road noise in your vehicle it's 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 something this is something to look at here how thick the actual rubber is it goes around doors that helps keep it a little bit quieter some sound deadening something like that and again that's why higher end vehicles cost more because they're doing everything they can to keep it quieter and with that being said that costs more money because they got to put more money into the vehicle all right everybody let's switch out cameras real quick and let's hop in on the inside and take a look around so I think one thing you're gonna notice when we get on the inside is that's really where the wear and tear starts taking a toll over 10 to 15 years. So let's go ahead and hop in, see what we got going on in here. And uh, because there is some things that are broke inside of here. Um, like I showed you earlier, the dash though is in great shape. And that's definitely something that uh, on some vehicles where it just starts cracking all up. And anyone that owns a vehicle for a long time, you don't want a dash that starts cracking because that's an expensive thing to have replaced. I mean, it is a nightmare putting a new dash in a vehicle, I promise you. Again, I had an Acura show car back in the day, and uh, this was back in the 2000s, around the same time this car was around. And um, there was a thing we used to do for the car shows where people were fiberglassing all the inside of their cars and painting it in there. Well, we took a dash out of my Acura and, um, and fiberglassed it and put it back in. It looked beautiful when done, but it was a nightmare to do. Anyways, as you can see, our door panel down here, you know, the leather's held up pretty good on there. The wood trim's held up. You got component sets on your speakers, which is nice. I mean, look at that. You got a mid there, a tweet there, another tweet over here. Holy mackerel. Memory seats, power windows, power door locks. Of course, you know, the little ashtray there for smoking is, is broken off. Cubby hole spots, all that. You got your BMW logo. Plenty of leg room down there for sure. Um, of course, you got a leather wrap steering wheel. And these BMWs, all these steering wheels look about the same from back in the day. Um, even all this looks about the same. Now this particular car you'll see has 163,000 miles on it. So it's definitely got some miles on this car. And uh, it's got a service engine soon light on and all that, you know. That's a given, right? I mean, it probably needs some service done in the shop back there. But whoever traded it in definitely left us a full tank of gas. Wow, that's pretty nice of them. So lights are over here, which is kind of odd to me, all the way over there. But here's your shifter. There's no start-stop engine button. You just put the key in and churn it. That opens up. There's a Dolby. <laughs> There's a tape deck here. Bass, treble, fader, all that. Of course, we got a little... Now, that's something that's nice to see right now is the AC is still blowing extremely cold in here. We're going to go ahead and churn it down, but AC is still working great, so that's nice. Let's hear radio for a minute. Uh, injury and harm to targeted groups. Take the case of Myanmar. 
Speakers yeah. sound good. I don't hear any crackling going on. I mean, of course, I don't have any hip hop music on right now. It's going to hit the bass on the speakers, but that sounds pretty nice. Um, you also got you got dual climate control, so you can change temperature on either side of the vehicle. You got heated seats in here. Look at that. Okay. Now, of course, I don't think they had cooled seats back in the year 2000, but we do got heated. And, um, I mean, for the most part, you know, it's just a little dirty in here, right? But the overall interior, I mean, this could all be cleaned up and look really fresh and nice. You know? Yeah, look at that. You just don't, you don't ever see cigarette ashtrays in cars anymore. It's just, it just doesn't happen, right? Still got your old-fashioned e-brake. Now, the armrest, there used to be a phone right here, and of course, that broke off. And uh, there's no phone at all, just a bunch of cords, okay? So that's that's broken off, and I can't seem to open that up to see if, if there's, you know, any, you know, ports or uh, power outlets down in the armrest there. Um, the leather seats are still in pretty good shape. Not bad, right? I mean, look at them. No rips, no tears. And the leather feels tough, you know? It's not, it doesn't feel cheap. And that's that's good because that means these leather seats are going to last a long time. And I can bet your britches these will probably last for another 10 years, you know? I mean, condition them with some leather conditioner, you'll be good to go. I mean, door panels are all intact. The glove box, you still got your manual in there. I like how you can close that down and don't have to look at the tape deck. So very clean, simple, conservative look inside your BMW. Up top here, you got, got your mirror. If we cut our headlights on, our light should come up on up top up there. Well, for some reason, it's not coming. Oh, there we go. So it took a second, but it, it came on. And then you got it over here as well. Okay, so it yeah, it comes on. If that's closed, it's not on. There you go. So that still works great. There's your sunroof up top. There's your controls. Let's see if it still works. How about that? Check that out. I mean, wow, we still working great all these years later. And you can tell, folks, I mean, look at the headliner up top here. I mean, you can tell it has not been leaking water into the car at all. Very clean, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, we do got a zip tie here kind of holding that thing up. Let's go take a look in the back seat, y'all, and see what we got going on. Well, I'm trying to get into the back seat of this BMW, but I can't seem to get the doors to come undone. <laughs> so, man, you know, it's just a little different than some of the other vehicles out here in the uh, the world, right? Um, your, your lock and unlock buttons are not, you know, like your typical car. They're not right here on the uh, on the door panel. They are actually over, over here, right there. And I'm pressing it, and I've been pressing it, and I just can't get it to unlock at all. Um, I was going to show you all the back seats back here, but it's just not unlocking. And uh, I called a friend here to see if he could tell me, but uh, hang on one second. Let's see what he's got to say. All right, I figured out how to open the back, right? Here's what I did, okay, because the button wasn't working in there. I took the key, put it in the door handle, turned it, and that unlocked lock the rear of the BMW. So uh, thanks to my friend for calling me and letting me know you could unlock it that way. Duh, right? Anyways, back seats. Look pretty good, you know? Not too bad. You know, just like the rest of the interior. I mean, realistically here, the leather has really held up really nicely on this car. I mean, you can see up there on the, uh, by that light, the headliner there, or the, some of it is starting to fall down. But, um, you know, it's just that old material they used to use back in the day on these BMWs. So, uh, but no major rips, no major tears or anything like that. I mean, the back... This area back here all looks pretty good. Speaker grills look good. It's really a nice older BMW. With a nice cleaning and a good wax job on it and maybe a nice little tune-up, this could be a really nice car for somebody. So uh, the 160,000 miles doesn't really scare me so much. Now again, I'm not buying the car, but you know, mileage could be interstate miles. People put miles on cars. It doesn't always mean an older car with a lot of mileage is going to be a bad vehicle. You know, you just got to take some upkeep and take care of your cars. All right, everybody, thank you for watching this review today of the 2000 BMW 528i. I hope some of the information was interesting to hear. I hope you got to, you know, enjoy watching and looking at this older car with us. And, um, 
If you can, subscribe, like, and comment on Charleston car videos. I try to do videos like this, new car reviews, used car reviews, on a weekly, daily basis. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you soon. I'm Chad, and I'm signing out.